Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to our brand new series in Scrappy with Python. In this series, we will see how we can set up Scrappy locally on your computer, how we can run it and how we can start web scrapping with Scrappy and everything you'll need to know to start your own project with Scrappy. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Now, before we begin, let me tell you a few things about Scrappy you should know. Now, first of all, let's explain what web scrapping is. Let's say we have a website right here, quotes to scrape. And let's say we want to download all the quotes in our system or maybe in a CSV format. We want an Excel which will contain the quote, maybe the author and the tags separated by comma. Now we can use Scrappy to load this page, to request the, this page basically, and then tell it to scrape all the quotes, and for each quote to get the quote, the author and the tags. We can also set, tell it to, as long as it has a button here called next, go to the next page and repeat this process, so we can take all the quotes this website has. But a real world scenario, could be maybe to scrape Amazon products. So if we click Amazon.com, for example, we might want to scrape the today's deals. So what our script can do is go to this page right here and then scrape the data and save it local. If you have seen already my previous series on Selenium or Puppeteer, then you will be asking what is the difference between Scrappy and them. Now Selenium and Puppeteer launch an actual browser and load the website on the browser and then perform any actions within that browser like fetch data or do certain automations. Now Scrappy doesn't launch a browser. Instead, it requests the HTML from this page right here, for example, and then it parses that HTML and based on the commands you give it, it will extract the data from that HTML. But it doesn't load any JavaScript, so for example, it will not function well for pages that are built with React, so that they have dynamic content, but it will work perfectly where you want to scrape mass data, because when compared with performance, Scrappy is a lot faster than Selenium or Puppeteer, because it doesn't have to launch any browser, it only sends a request for the HTML, and that's it. So for any sites like Amazon, for example, or sites that you want to scrape content, and maybe mass content, like products from Amazon, or this website, which I'll be showcasing on this video, on this series, and I'll, I'll probably do Amazon as well in this series. So as you'll see, the moment I request this website, the codes are already loaded. It doesn't require any JavaScript to load the elements. Then Scrappy is the best option for this. So when you want to do certain automation on the website, then you will probably need to use Selenium or Puppeteer. And I'll have a link if you want to actually do that instead up here. So you can see my Selenium tutorial with Python. But I suggest you learn Scrappy as well because whenever you want to scrape mass data, for example, you, you might want to scrape Reddit, Reddit posts, or I don't know, Amazon products or anything like that, then Scrappy is very fast and very efficient for that use case. Again, they have two separate use cases. So for Scrappy, you, the pros are that it's very fast and very efficient. But the cons is that it doesn't load any JavaScript. But I'll show you, even though it doesn't load any JavaScript, there is a way to use Scrappy and also load JavaScript and basically load the pages. I'll show you that in a future episode because it is more advanced. Now, when web scrapping with Scrappy, proxies are a must. Without them, websites can detect too many requests coming from the same IP address and they will block you. That's why using a good proxy provider like Node Maven, which is the sponsor of this video, is key and they offer over 95%
clean proxies, helping you avoid detection. Now the only reason I recommend NodeMaven is because I use it for my own projects and for my client projects and I only be using NodeMaven for months now and that's why I partner with them. It's the only proxy provider I trust and I suggest for everyone. Plus they let you choose between residential and mobile proxies and even specify details like your country for more precise scrapping. Start using reliable proxies by using the link down in the description and when you go on your checkout, make sure you click apply coupon here and type Michael to get 2 extra gigabytes at checkout and also for a limited time period we have two discount codes one is Michael20 where you can get 20% off of any package you choose now this offer expires at December 7th so make sure you grab it fast and also there is a Black Friday deal if you use the code BF24 you will get double your traffic for any business package you purchase with a subscription. Now I'll be covering in a future episode how we can use proxies with Scapy, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Okay, so let's see how we can start our first project. If you haven't already, you will need to install Python because we will be writing Python code. Now, if you don't know what Python is and you haven't learned Python yet, you must watch a python tutorial i haven't created one myself yet so just search on youtube python tutorial first learn the basics of python and then come back to this video but if you are familiar with python then you can go ahead and download python if you haven't already and let's open command line now i'm using mac but it will be the same for you just cd just go to a path on your command line where you want to create your project for me it is at the desktop folder and then all we will do first of all so let's go back on google let's go on scrappy on pp.org and let's copy this command which is to download to install scrappy now i'll have all those links down in the description if you want to find them so let's go back and let's first of all run pip install scrappy now if you have installed a specific python version do pip 3. Point and whatever that version is i'm using 3.11 perfect now what we will do let's go back we will visit the documentation for scrappy again link down in the description and if we scroll down as you will see it tells us how to create a project and this is the command for it scrappy start project and then here you tell it the project name so let's copy it and paste it here and it will create the project on your system now all you have to do is cd tutorial and then if you are using visual studio code type code dot space and then dot to open it in vs code otherwise just open it in your own editor it doesn't really matter what you use but it will be a lot easier if you are also using VS Code to follow along with me. Now let's go ahead and see the structure of the project and so I can explain a bit what each thing is. Now this is the config file for Scrappy. And as you will see, we define some variables for, for example, we will define the settings and how it will find the settings. So we do tutorial, which is the folder name, and then dot settings right here this is the project name and we will leave that for later here you will define the url when you go ahead and deploy it but it doesn't matter then we have the settings and here we define certain settings for our scrapper so let's go ahead and see some of them but we will see the rest of them down the in, down the line so as you'll see first of all you define the bot name which is tutorial and uh, here you define where it will find the spy spider modules now spider modules is the path for the modules we will, we will create each module will do a certain task like create the quotes from the website i showed you the quotes website now new spider module 
is the same where are we going to save the new module in the tutorial.spider so any module we'll create will be inside this folder again you can edit this but for now we'll keep it simple and lastly as you'll see right here obey robots.txt rules now each website has a robots.txt file now most of the popular ones do maybe a simple website might not now this robots.txt file as you'll see for python.org tells scrapper like the one we will create which website which paths on that website are allowed to be scraped and which are not so as you will see here for example it disallows this path right here which is the main path for python.org if you want to simply find if it allow you to scrape those links you can do that through the robots.txt but usually if it is public data you are probably allowed to scrape that data but also make sure you check the robots.txt and also check the website's terms of service because most websites will tell you on their terms of service if they forbid cropping and violating that terms of service will could result in legal trouble so make sure you don't scrape any websites that tell you that scraping their content is not allowed but also if the data is copyrighted i mean you cannot use that data as your own so again make sure you do some research it's not always clear if you are allowed to scrape any website so make sure you do your own research okay now the rest are for other settings for your scrapper again we will go through them in the next episodes as we use them but for now we will skip them because i don't want to make it i don't want to make it very complicated now next we have pipelines now pipeline we create a pipeline whenever we want to to process or modify items after we scrape them for example if we want to scrape a quote but we want to save it in lowercase or we want to remove certain words from that quote we will edit this function here process item and tell it for a certain variable for example for the quote to process the code and then do certain stuff with that item that we scraped now middleware modifies requests or responses before and after they are processed by the spider everything from settings pipelines middleware etc i'm just giving you a general understanding of it, each file and what it does and then we have items.py and here we define the variables we will be scraping for example in our case we will define three variables one is the author then we have also the quote and then we have the tags three variables now if we want to, to get something else as well we will also define it there this is like a schema so we can make things more clean or more organized basically and then finally here on the spiders here on this folder we will create each spider or each i don't know function or whatever you like to call it which will do certain tasks now that's it for this video in the next video we will create our first scrapper so i'll show you how you can create your first spider basically and yeah with that said if you enjoy this series make sure you hit that like button subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of the future episodes